Certainly there is no disputing that the Sex Pistols hit the music in pop culture worlds like a dump truck full of napalm. An assault of nihilism and noise that sent grannies running for cover. A lot of that had to do with our legendary guitarist, Steve Jones, who destroyed convention and ear drums with a sound that defined the punk era. An era that we could be on the verge of repeating with today's working class frustration and destruction of the status quo. And a very mercurial president elect here to help me understand the parallels at Steve Jones, a man who got a peek into hell and made it back alive. He just released his memoir. It's called Lonely Boy Tales from a Sex Pistol, chronicles a life from West London, street urchin to rock and roll superstar. Jonesy, it's so nice to meet you. I've heard you on the radio in L.A. for so many years. Obviously, I know your, your storied life to some degree, but now I get to read about it in depth in this book. I also did the audio for it, too, if you want to hear my sexy voice. Uh, one of your fellow Sex Pistols, I think, is the most annoying, pain-in-the-ass, narcissistic, exhausting people on the face of the earth. I wonder what one that is. Johnny Rotten. He, he's walked out on two interviews I've done with him for no reason, just to be a jerk face. And at one point, I thought it was really interesting because you write about how you sort of uh, long to be in the clash. And I think it was to get away from Johnny. Is that what it was? Grass is always greener. And the clash is always greener. You know, but uh, so why did he, why did, why did you think he walked out? He didn't have an answer and just turned it around or? The first time it was in uh, 1994. And it was the Monday after Kurt Cobain had killed himself on a Friday. Yeah. And so I asked him about the parallels between Sid, Sid Vicious and Kurt Cobain, which I think is a very fair question. Y yeah. And then he got upset that I wasn't paying enough attention to his book. Not talking about him. Yeah. So yeah. he tore off he his went mic. went away from him for a second. Called me a silly b and then stormed off. Yeah. Well, and did that do well, though? Do people like that stuff? I guess so. You know, people love that stuff, <laughs> don't they? I guess so. It's tough. It's tough to try and, you know... Do an interview, but it seems like when it, when you're doing that's I think that, I think he's still caught up in that era yeah. still. I don't think he's let that go and moved on. And you know. guys aren't going to play again anytime, right? Not in the, not for the money we get paid. Yeah, it's not Guns N' Roses money, is it? No, if it was, I'd I'd, I'd love John. <laughs> he's the best singer ever. He's a great personality. Uh, who do you think has a bigger rift, you and John or the Gallagher brothers? Um, well, they're brothers, so it seems like brothers always have a rift a yeah. lot deeper than two individuals uh, you know Ray Davis and mm -hmm. and uh, his brother they were always fighting it seems like brothers always fight yeah we don't really have a rift we just don't want to be around each other I wouldn't want to be around them you know no I, I like that that you and Johnny Ramone were friends yeah although yeah. you didn't like the New York punk scene why didn't you like New York punk it, it, it wasn't people get this mixed up I didn't not like the New York punk scene but a lot of people, uh, these magazines that were in New York, the people from the outside who ain't actually in the band, yeah. come up with the punk started here, it's the Ramones, it's blah, 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 blah. I mean, we were actually playing before I ever heard the Ramones yeah. album. That's right. And I, got, I, li I like the Ramones. I've got no problem with the Ramones. I was a massive New York Dolls fan. Yeah. You know, and they, and they was... But New not York. Patty Smith. Not big, not big on a hairy... <laughs> No, I'm not into hair. <laughs> Harry. Uh, there's so many great stories in your book, so many anecdotes from mm -hmm. your childhood. Uh, one of my favorites was there was a, a bar at the end of King's Road called the Bird's Nest. Yeah. And you said it was very appropriate because yeah. you found a lot of birds in there. I did. And one, one nest landed an egg. Yeah. And I, I don't know where that egg is now, but I think it's alive somewhere. 2016 was a tough year musically because we lost... Uh, you a know, lot. Prince, David Bowie, George Michael, which death of a fellow musician affected David you Bowie, both? Yeah. Without a doubt. That was the one that uh, I felt completely weird when I heard on the phone. I was with, I was just talking to Dave Grohl. Yeah. And I was getting him to come on my show. It was the first time I was doing my show five days a week. Yeah. And it's Sunday night I'm, and, and Monday I, I had to, and I'm like, oh, I better get a guest come in with a bang you know I hadn't done it I was just doing a Friday thing so I called up Dave Grohl he was really close with Lemmy mm -hmm. so I thought I'd get him on we'd talk about Lemmy my dog's name oh really mm -hmm. and uh, so he said yeah sure I'll come on talk about Le Lemmy ten minutes later I get a phone call David Bowie's just dropped dead oh and I'm like oh man and I never get emotional 
or feel weird about anyone. Yeah. And I didn't really know David Bowie. I, I met him a couple of times. So we were both mourning the next day. He was doing his thing with Lemmy, who also was a friend of mine too. Yeah. The, but the Bowie thing, it just really, it really hurt me for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, uh, the Prince music... could have been avoided. Yes, George Michael perhaps as well. We still don't know all the circumstances yeah, of his passing, right. but you know it, it's tough. It's an emotional thing to be a musician, and sometimes when it works out, it can make it even tougher for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. All right. Well, continued success. The book is great. Your radio show is amazing. People who don't live in Los Angeles can still stream it on KLOS. Uh, will this be a great era for punk rock in uh, the shadow of the Trump administration? Do you think? I have no idea, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a political person. I think it's all a load of nonsense. Wh whoever you vote for, uh, I think it's Coke or Pepsi. Yeah. And I think there's bigger strings pulling pulling the puppets. So I'm. I'm not. I'm not into politics. All right. Yeah. Well, let it be music then.